In structural geology, we are looking at the deformation of rocks due to stresses within the earth. And what we are going to do in this video is we are going to look at how information collected at the surface can be used to determine the structure, synclines, anticlines, and so forth, of rocks and their distribution at depths down into the earth even though we have not gone down into the earth to see them. So, what we are going to do is an example cross-section where we have different rock layers of different colors in this map at the surface, and we're going to use the information in the map area to draw out what the structure looks like in the subsurface. So, the first thing you will need is a scrap sheet of paper, because we are going to hold it up in this video to the A to B line and you want to make a tick mark for A and B and then you want to make a tick mark for each contact which is the black line where the rocks change in this case from purple to red so we want to make a tick mark on our scrap sheet of paper for each of those contacts so I'm going to mark A I'm going to mark B first so that when we move our scrap sheet of paper it's easy to line it back up to where it goes and then again for each of those contacts which is the change in color in the map or where the rocks are changing at the surface we have made <coughs> excuse me, a tick mark we are going to go down to our topographic profile which has already been done for us and on our topographic profile we are going to make a tick mark for each of the contacts that we have put on our scrap sheet of paper going from A to B. So hold your scrap sheet of paper up and then transfer those tick marks onto the topographic profile. The next step we need now that we know the distribution of the rock layers here is we need strike and dip data to tell us what direction and how steeply are the rocks in the subsurface going. Are they going down to the right, down to the left, straight down? That information comes from these strike and dip symbols. The first thing you want to do is you want to take a ruler and extend the strike of each symbol till it hits your A to B line. So line up the ruler. You want this to be as straight as possible. You can see I'm freehanding it, but you should use a ruler when doing this. So we have extended the strike of each of our symbols till it hits the A to B line. What we're going to do with our scrap sheet of paper is set it up on a clean side, and where each of those four strike and dip symbols that we have extended the strike hit the A to B line, we're going to make a tick mark on our scrap sheet of paper. So I'm going to mark where A is. Mark where B is, label each of those on my scrap sheet of paper, and then for each of the four strike and dip symbols, I have made a tick mark on my scrap paper. What you then want to do for each tick mark is copy the strike and dip symbol exactly as it looks like in the map area below that tick mark. You might have to pull the paper back to see what it looks like but you wind up with something that looks like that and what we already know before we even start drawing our structure is that we are looking at an anticline the dips are pointing away from each other from the hinge line which is in the center because we look for where stratigraphy or layers are repeated, so the green is the center, the hinge line is going through the center of it. We have steeper plunge or steeper dip on this side than we have on that side. So we can make a simple sketch of what we might expect it to look like. So I am expecting our fold to look something like that. Steeper again on this side than it looks on that side. What we're going to do is we're going to take our scrap sheet of paper and we're going to line it up with A to B down 
on our profile, and this time instead of making a tick mark, we want to make a little ball on the surface. So I'm going to make four balls on the topographic profile where the tick mark for each strike and dip symbol is on our scrap sheet of paper. And then what we're going to do for each of the balls is give them a tail. Now remember, horizontal is zero, vertical is 90. So the first ball says we're dipping this direction 50 degrees. So I'm going to just eyeball 50 degrees is going to be like that. And then 30 degrees is going to be a little more shallow, like that. So I have made my four tails, 50 degrees a little bit more steep, 30 degrees a little bit more shallow. And what we're going to do is each of these tick marks is a contact, so we're going to draw a line. That line follows the orientation of the tail. So this line should follow the orientation of the tail for the strike and dip closest to it. So we go ahead and we make our drawing. of our layers and as we thought it's a little steeper on one side a little more shallow on the other what I'm going to do is color it in with highlighter and I recommend bringing colored pencils markers highlighters whatever to class because sometimes putting color to what you drew helps make it stand out and easier to see. Let me go ahead and color this in. And forgive me if I don't stay in the lines. It's been a while since I've been in grade school where you do such things, believe it or not. But you can see now, green is in the center. We then have blue next to it. And we can see how the layers match up on each side of the fold once we add that color. To each layer. Red's going to have to be pink because I don't have a red highlighter. But you'll get the idea. Trying to go quick so I don't waste too much of your time watching me color on a video. And the last layer <coughs> that we have present is purple. And so here, now that it's colored in, it really stands out and is easier to see. A uh, good tip that you should always follow is that the thickness of each layer, like the blue layer, should be the same throughout your entire cross section. You should not have, say, a really thick blue over here and then a really thin blue over here. The same colored layer should be the same thickness on each side of the fold. So follow these principles. The cross sections that you will see in an intro physical geology lab are going to be more complex than this, but you follow these steps. Always follow the tails on your strike and dip with your layers and you should wind up with what the rocks look like at depth and this could be 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 feet below the surface we've determined what the rock layers look like just from information that we were able to collect at the surface. This is a very great and powerful tool maybe one of the most important in all of geology which is why we save it for the end that really brings everything together is extremely important in resource exploration for things such as petroleum and something you should definitely know and appreciate uh, in an intro physical geology course and be ready to complete successfully in a structural geology lab.